while processing pictures in PixInsight is to a certain part a creative activity, which leads to a million different ways how a single object can actually be depicted, and that's the great part. But that doesn't mean that everything goes. There are, especially with the latest tools that were introduced to PixInsight, some rules which have to be obeyed. And in this video, I will show you 10 rules which you should, in most cases, not break. And I will explain it based on facts, based on rational, or also based on simply what the creator of these tools are saying, why this actually is like that, right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. It has sometimes almost comical character when on Facebook groups somebody asks, should I actually use the Star Exterminator before or after stretching? Which leads to a million different posts where people say that it should be done before stretching, after stretching, they only stretch a little bit and then they do it, and anything else imaginable. Now some people believe that this is debatable, but it's not. There are some accurate answers to such questions. But before I start with these 10 rules, just one remark. Rules are there to be broken. So while these rules apply in about 99.5% of all cases, if at one point these rules do not lead to the expected results, sure, let's try to experiment, nothing can happen. And with that, let's get going. And I do it in chronological sequence, from the stacking, to the final picture. And so number one, we start actually with the stacking and with cosmetic correction. Now they're going some wrong statements around like cosmetic correction is not needed anymore because we have more modern cameras, blah, blah, blah. No, cosmetic correction is actually the bad pixel map. And while in AstroPixel processor, it is called the bad pixel map, Obviously, PixInsight has to use a much more fancy term like cosmetic correction, but it is the bad pixel map. And every camera can have and does have bad pixels. And so this is absolutely vital. And there is actually no reason why you should not use the cosmetic correction in the stacking. Number two, crop. We do always at the beginning of the processing crop the picture, which means to crop everything away, which is actually impacted by the stacking. So different rotation, not matching or whatever, which leads some black parts or noise or whatever outside the real picture. Now, why is this so crucial? The reason is that, for example, the gradient removal might be impacted by that. And there's a common theme, which you will see, which practically goes through all of these 10 rules. We want at each place of the processing, remove the information that we do not want or that's disturbing us and enhance the information that we actually want to display in the final picture. And so anything around the picture that is waste should be removed as soon as possible. And with the WBPP, it actually offers the auto cropping, which does that from the beginning. Next up, gradient removal. We always do the gradient removal right after the crop. And that's the same reason as before. The gradient is waste. So first of all, it might disturb later processes like SBCC or like Blur Exterminator, but it also disturbs us because it's like a curtain over the rest of the picture. So it's hard for us to evaluate what's actually going on and how we actually do the rest ideally. And even worse with stretching, the gradient could actually be even more integrated in the picture as something we do not want. Number four, SPCC. SPCC comes next right after the gradient removal. Reason for that, SPCC relies on the point spread function. And for example, Blur Exterminator messes with the point spread function. So if you do Blur Exterminator first, then SPCC, the results SPCC will deliver might be wrong. Number five, background neutralization. 
background neutralization is integrated in SPCC, which means you do not have to do it separately anymore. That's a process you do not need anymore. And as a bonus, another process which you should not use anymore or rather sparingly is SCNR. And the reason here is actually that SPCC corrects the color to be accurate. And if you then use SCNR afterwards, you're actually messing this up again. So except SPCC did out of whatever reason a suboptimal job, SCNR should not be used. Also because SCNR actually impacts the luminosity. Number six, Blur Exterminator. Blur Exterminator comes right after SPCC. And the reason here is that Blur Exterminator needs an unaltered picture as much as possible because it should recover these low contrast details which are hidden in the picture. So if you're messing with the picture, for example, I saw recently someone who used Noise Exterminator before Blur Exterminator. And if you do something like that, you're destroying all this information that Blur Exterminator needs to do its job. So we do Blur Exterminator as soon as possible. Next one, Noise Exterminator. And the Noise Exterminator comes right after the Blur Exterminator. And there's a lot of discussions. This, this is probably the most disputed point. Should actually be the Noise Exterminator be done in the linear phase or in the non-linear phase? And there is a very clear answer to that, not from me, but from Ross. And he clearly states that the Noise Exterminator should be done in the linear phase. It just does the better job because again, if you first stretch, then you bake the noise into the picture and it's much harder then to remove it again. And you also will be biased in the stretching activity and you might try to hide the noise and stuff like that. And when it's already gone, you much clearer see the picture that you want to actually achieve when you're doing the stretching. And with that, we're already at number eight, Star Exterminator. And here we have the same discussions all over again, especially because in Star Exterminator, there is now this tick box on screen function, which you can use when you do the Star Extermination on the nonlinear phase. But also here, Ross recommends to do the Star Extermination in the linear phase. And I've tested that. And while the on-screen function definitely helps when you exterminate the stars in the non-linear phase, the results removing the stars in the linear phase is still way, way better. But here there's also another argument why to do it like this. Because the stars deserve our full attention and so does the main object. So if you have separate RGB stars, then you want to not be disturbed when you're stretching with the stars. So you want to have them gone as soon as possible so that you can fully focus on the main object when stretching. And if you're using the same stars in the picture, also for the final picture, still you want to be able to process the stars differently. For example, for the stars, it might make sense to also use an arc sign stretch at the start, while for the main object, usually you do not do that. So the outcome of your picture will definitely better if you can stretch the stars and the main objects separately. And with number nine, we go away again from the RC Astro tools. Screen transfer function is not for stretching, full stop. And I see that way too often also in YouTube tutorials. I understand it's going fast and when you do a tutorial, you want to move on. You don't want to stick along with the stretching but the screen transfer function has its functionality that you can do the auto stretch throughout the linear processing, but it's just not sophisticated enough to give you a good stretch for your final picture. So please take the time and learn the generalized hyperbolic stretch GHS. Adam Block has just done an absolutely stunning tutorial and also Polyman Astro has done a wonderful tutorial for GHS. You will see it makes all the difference. And last but not least, if you have to recombine your stars with the main object at the very end of your processing, please, please, please do not use pixel mass A plus B. This leads to a lot of different issues from halos to wrong colors 
and so on. There is a correct formula to do that. That's this one. I will also put it in the description below. And why is this the correct formula? Because it's the inverse formula from the on-screen function that, for example, the star exterminate uses to remove the stars. And all the scripts and the tools that you find to reintegrate these stars use exactly this formula, just a little bit nicely packaged into a script. But that's all the magic. And with this, we're at the end of the 10 golden rules. And I believe even if you follow these 10 rules, there is still a wide range of creative freedom that you have. But by following these rules, you ensure that in these key processes, you get the best result possible. I hope this was helpful. Very interested if you agree with me or if you disagree in one or the other points, please leave your comments below. And if you want to see this rule put together in a workflow, please have a look at my PixInsight workflows where I actually demonstrate how everything fits together. See you next time and clear skies.